on Ticker. This is Import and Export with Lawrence Christophelts. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Import Export here on TickerTV.com.au. I'm your host, Lawrence Christophelts. Yet again, we've got a fantastic lineup, interesting guests and industry experts for you on today's show. Our first guest is Nathaniel Block. Nathaniel Block is a non-executive director of the French Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And he's also the co-founder and co-host of a, an SPS podcast called Europa Voice. So thanks for joining us, Nathaniel. How are you today? I'm good, Lawrence. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, my pleasure. Look out. I'm really delighted to, to get you on finally. Before we kick off, Nathaniel, maybe for all the viewers, tell us a little bit about FATCHI and the role and how you um, support Australia by bilateral trade and investment. Yes, for sure. And so, so the French Australian uh, Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry is an old organization. It was, in fact, founded in uh, 1899. And wow. at the origin, it was for the import and export of wool only. That was the purpose of the FACI at the at the beginning. Now it's an independent, uh, non-for-profit organization with headquarters in Sydney, and we have offices all across Australia in Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth, um, and uh, Adelaide. There are in Australia more than 500 members. Which is important is that the French Australian Chamber of Commerce helps both, obviously, French companies but also Australian companies. And our goal now, our challenge is try to keep on helping our members and help them navigating through these difficult times of COVID-19. I think that um, you know, many, many of us Australians know obviously the fantastic produce and wine and things that come out of France, um, but not many of us know about the infrastructure and some of the, the major projects that, um, uh, that French companies are involved with, not just in here in Victoria, but right across the country. Yes, Lawrence, you just mentioned the infrastructure and it's, and it's true about infrastructure, about transport, about roads, that there are a lot of reasons uh, to be proud to have uh, French companies here in Australia. Just to give you a few names, uh, and I'm sure all the audience has, had already uh, heard about it, there are like, there is Transdev, there is a Buick Construction, uh, there is Safran, all these companies, uh, there is Metro Train, all these companies, you know, are well settled in Australia and they work on very big and important projects for uh, the daily life of Australians. Um, what really was a game changer in the French Australian relationship in terms of cooperation in infrastructure mm -hmm. was the big uh, contract uh, signed a few uh, months, years ago now, with uh, the French uh, submarine group Naval. Wow. It's uh, a 34 billion euro contract at mm -hmm. the time, the million, billion, sorry. Uh, uh, Australian dollars contract uh, mm -hmm. to build uh, 12 uh, submarines uh, based in Adelaide. It really was not just a contract about submarines, but it was a contract about cooperation, mm -hmm. science cooperation, technological cooperation, uh, supplier cooperation, all these kind of things. And so the movement is in, still increasing. And now our uh, challenge at FACI is to help uh, all these uh, big cooperation projects to keep on uh, mm -hmm. being and exist uh, after also obviously the, the COVID-19 when things will go back to normal. Absolutely. I think I was going to bring up the defence um, capabilities and, and collaboration. You've beaten me to it. So thank you, Nathaniel. As you said, infrastructure, defence, there's a lot of synergetic around the broader supply chains between those two sectors. I was going to ask you, Nathaniel, what about outside of those, those big sectors? And we know the food and wine is always is always a, a very strong one as well. But what other sectors do you see emerging between the two markets, or just in coming out of France, not just in Australia but globally? Other, what about technology? The you know other things that uh, Industry 4.0. What do you see emerging out of uh, future France opportunities? Um, that's a very good question, Lawrence. I think there are like, uh, but it's still related to the, uh, I would say, to the defence and infrastructure. But in Australia, you have over 600 French companies here that employ more than 70,000 people. So you have place for everyone. But I would say that if I want to talk about another sector, the tech, uh, the data sector mm. is also um, uh, an object of more and more cooperation between France and Australia. And just in the last uh, month, you, you, you had a couple of uh, a French company that settled in Australia or that opened a new office. And I think, you know, all this uh, tech uh, along the infrastructure and along, uh, I would say, the harder uh, industry uh, will be very crucial in the in the French-Australian relationship. And I think also, and it's uh, because of what happens with COVID-19, with all the kind of, uh, you know, working remotely, uh, not being able to go necessarily on site, 
all these things related to data driven uh, uh, sector with tech will keep on also being seen as a more an opportunity of uh, cooperating collaborating between french and australian companies fantastic yeah i think that uh, as you say there's there's so many more um, strings to the bow, if you like, between France and Australia, and that, that's emerging every every week, every month. And as we emerge out of this crisis, I think people will really appreciate that technological advancements as well, not just around defence infrastructure, but aerospace, um, aviation, logistics. I know there's a lot of French expertise around supply chain, facilitation, distribution, logistics. But I wanted to ask you um, a bit more about the Europa Voice, the SPS. Uh, podcast yes. that you're doing, Nathaniel. That, that sounds really interesting. It's a weekly podcast uh, talking about Europe. Uh, there are several reasons about that. The first one is because we want for the Australian audience to understand that now a decision which is taken in France uh, has been necessarily influenced or shaped, in a sense, by Europe. 80% of French laws are, in fact, only translation, if I could say, of European laws into the national uh, uh, system. So our goal with this podcast is to make the pedagogy of Europe and to explain, in fact, what happens in Europe at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it can be about politics. It's a lot also about uh, economy. One of our first podcasts was about uh, a merger that failed in Europe right. between Alstom and Siemens. Mm. And I'm sure you heard about uh, mm. about it. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that we we felt the need to explain for people to understand and to be able to do a better business here even if you do business with a country you have to understand that it's shaped also by europe yeah. and if i just take again the example and the very uh, topical example of covid 19 yeah. um obviously every country is independent to uh, a, a shape and to draw the exit strategy but europe uh, european union has released one week ago um a joint statement about an exit strategy uh, for covid 19 why because you can't imagine that every country will be totally independent in the exit strategy because mm. borders are so closed. Yeah. Everything is so ingrained in each other. Every country will do what they want, yeah. but Europe has to shape the decision, has to give um, a, a direction, a guideline, because it will have an impact uh, for all European countries. So that's a bit the interest of the post is to explain why and how Europe is important even in the uh, bilateral trade between Australia and other countries. I think that um, we're lucky because we are our own island, if you like, but um, everything that happens in France has a direct impact on Europe as a broader continent. So there's, there's definitely a lot of, lot makes so much sense to understand that bigger picture. And the podcast, while people are you know, locked away in isolation, it's great ability for them and opportunity for them to listen to the podcast. You can, if you're looking at to go into that European market to understand the nuances, the laws, the things that worked, the things that didn't work can, can really make or break your, your market success or even just understand how to do business better with France and French companies will be really powerful. And I know you had uh, interviewed a couple of uh, weeks uh, uh, someone from the EABC, the European Australian Chamber of Commerce. That's right. At the moment, there's this framework of the free trade agreement between uh, European Union and Australia. And it's an amazing trade opportunity for yeah. both entities. For Australia, it's the access of a 600 million people market, mm. which is the biggest market uh, almost in, in the world. It's also an opportunity to have a strong presence in the Pacific, yeah. which will be uh, crucial in the following uh, decades, a bubble with what happens in China. The fact to have a strong presence in the Pacific yeah. is also very important for Europe, and that's why this free trade agreement, which is still into negotiation, there are still rounds of mm. negotiation, is very important. Um, in Europe, we are not used, in fact, to have a lot of uh, free trade agreement because it's a free market, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's why also COVID-19 is quite difficult to understand for people in Europe because that's the first time, in fact, that people are restricted to uh, travel. Yeah. Uh, goods are restricted to go from one country to another. But yeah. for a country such as Australia, obviously, negotiating free trade agreement uh, is something that you do on, I would say, almost on a daily basis. Great. I really appreciate you coming on the show this morning, finally, and we'll get you on again uh, very soon because those, as those FTA discussions continue to progress, I'd love to get a whole range of new perspectives on that as well. Um, thanks again so much for this morning. We're going to be checking out that podcast and look forward to, to speaking to you again very soon, Nathaniel. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks a lot. Great.